Hey everyone, I am going to make my very first DIY video. So it's going to be based off of Claire Saffitt's new book. And I am actually in my car because I am going to go to Target to pick up some things. So come along with me. All right, y'all, so I'm just now leaving Target. It took a while, there's a lot of people out right now, but I got everything and I will see you when I am back in my kitchen. All right, y'all, so I'm back and I've got everything that I need and I am ready to make this blueberry buckle streusel. So let's get started. All right, all right, so first things first, we have to preheat the oven. So let's go ahead and put that to 350. We'll wait for, the, whoop, 350. Let's try that again. There we go. To put a whole cup of all-purpose flour in a bowl. All right, and the recipe calls for a half cup of light brown sugar, but all I have is dark brown, so I'll be using that. Next on the list is some kosher salt. So Claire actually specifies um, half a teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt or one fourth teaspoon of Morton kosher salt, which is what I have here. Okay, next on the list is half a tablespoon of ground cinnamon. So that's gonna go in now. Okay, and after the ground cinnamon, we have a full stick of butter. Now Claire does specify to cut it into pieces and I'm assuming this is to mix it in to the dry ingredients a lot better or incorporate it easier. Okay, so one thing I did forget to mention is the butter does have to be in uh, at room temperature. Don't forget that room temp. Okay, next. So we have to have a cup of corn flakes, lightly crushed. Check. Okay, so I was not prepared. I didn't charge my iPhone, but I'm actually making the cake mixture right now. So I'm mixing up the dry ingredients, which are one and two thirds cups of all purpose flour, one third cup of coarse ground yellow cornmeal, two teaspoons, or actually one teaspoon of Morton kosher salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of finely grated lemon zest, uh, 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter. So that actually equals out to a whole stick and two slices, I guess. It's all measured actually right here. Check it out. Yeah, makes it easier, but yeah. So a full stick of that and half of the, or two of the, the tablespoons. Boom, boom. And then the last thing or the last three things I'm gonna add are the two large eggs, the one or the half cup of buttermilk. Vanilla, ex vanilla extract is actually in there already. And then the last thing is the blueberries. All right, y'all, here comes the fun part. So I have to mix everything up together, throw the butter inside, um, including the cornflakes, and then mix it in with my hands so it sticks to my fingers. So let's do that now. I'm just gonna combine it. Claire specifically said don't um, over mix it. Make sure that there's still a little bit of flour. Okay, I'm gonna throw my pieces of butter in here. <laughs> come on, come on. I got stuck because it's at room temp. <laughs> here we go. Cool. So I'll get back to you guys once I mix all of this up and then I'll show you the end result. So I mixed everything up and in the book, Claire specifies that you're pretty much done mixing it once you see that it's a little bit moist, the cornflakes, and it starts to stick to your fingertips, which it is. So I am done making the streusel. Okay, yeah, so this is the final step. Um, I actually skipped a step so what I did is actually combine all the dry ingredients first. So you're not supposed to do that. Um, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and mix all this stuff together first. So, okay, and go the dry ingredients. Let's mix it up a little bit. Just put it on stir so it's well combined. So we'll let that run. Next on the list, 
Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add in the butter and the lemon zest. you guys could smell this mm -mm -mm -mm. okay so I'm gonna go ahead and combine this and then I will show you the next step all right y'all so I think we're at about the halfway point right now so in the book Claire specifies to wait till it looks like it's kind of like sand like a sand consistency uh, you do want to turn it off every once in a while to scrape the sides just to make sure everything's incorporated now I do have uh, the oven running right now it's preheated at 350 ready to go and make sure you have a 9 by 9 inch pan ready to go as well so what I do is I combine it with butter or I put butter all over the pan and then lay some parchment paper so it doesn't stick but this is looking pretty good all right cool so I just want to show you guys what it looks like here kind of looks like popcorn and less like sand to me but anyways uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in the eggs so the wet ingredients, okay? You may you want to make sure you want to do it slowly and incorporate uh, one thing at a time. So I'm going to do the eggs first. Yes, I risk the eggshells. I know. I always, always get that that look from everyone when they see me baking. Like, why are you, why are you cracking eggs over the freaking batter? But I don't know. I've been baking since I since fifth, like I was 15 so kind of just stuck with me <laughs> so I'll go ahead and show you guys the end result once I am done with this batter all right so the second egg just went in it's looking really good it smells delicious and I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the buttermilk I actually added half of it earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and add the other half slowly just a little bit at a time make sure it's incorporating well now another thing that you want to do is you actually want to make sure you're stopping the mixture and scraping the sides every once in a while just to make sure the the whole bowl gets incorporated well. All right, sweet. Okay guys, last step is adding the blueberries. Well, second to last step I should say. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the recipe calls for two pints so that's about wow well, not two pints sorry two cups so what I did is I actually bought a lot of blueberries because I didn't know how to convert the pint to grams and my food scale is MIA so yeah anyways we're gonna go ahead and put two cups of these bad boys in there now Claire does say that the batter will look extremely thick and the blueberries will make it look uh, weird, obviously because of the color. But she said, don't worry about it. Just keep incorporating them in there. So I have a little bench scraper. It's kind of flexible. I would say you could bend it with your hands if you really wanted to. So the more flexible, the better, in my opinion. Um, but anyways, what you have to do is actually fold in the blueberries. So don't mix it, but fold it. Now what I mean by that, if you don't know is combining it as like this so up over down the middle you want to just keep repeating that until the blueberries are very incorporated into this batter all right guys so this is the final step just putting the corn uh, cornflake mix on top even it out i did tap the pan here and there just making sure there's no air bubbles and this is the the final result we're going to go ahead and throw this in the oven and then it's going to come out within like the next two hours. All right, y'all. This cake is smelling so good. Um, so I'm at the halfway point right now and I did rotate it. So I'm going to let it go for another 52 minutes, totaling at about uh, maybe about an hour and like 45 minutes. And then I'll show you the end result. Berries look good. 
It's still really hot though. 